Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're gonna continue with what we're doing and we're gonna start exactly where we left off. So where did we leave off? We left off in the previous video writing a simple HTTP server and we were serving up two paths essentially, right? Forward slash, which was welcome or welcome page and then forward slash home, which would take us to our home page. Now in this video, we're gonna take exactly what we did and we're gonna extend it. And what we're gonna have is the ability to create dynamic pages. First, we start off in the first video or template being strings, then we put them in files, but now we're gonna use the HTML template package. And this is no different than actually the text template package. So that exactly what we're gonna do in this section is integrate the temp HTML template package. I'm starting exactly where we left off. So create a directory of that, um, run the code, Make sure that how um, you know it still works. Um, test it. Um, make sure that how you can't um, the, to make validate that the port is not open already. I run the server, and there it is. That's our previous um, piece of code. Um, the next thing now is to ask ourselves: Well, what are we doing here? How do we read from template, or how do we use this HTML template package? Well, the best place to go is the documentation for that, and so. We're gonna jump over and look over packages, scroll down to the HTML section there, click on template packages, and there you go. Um, the important thing here is to read and focus on where it says that if you're using, um, you wanna generate HTML template, you should use the HTML template package, not just the text package. Um, it's like I said up there, this looks exactly like the text template package, the same interface. So you shouldn't have any problem using it whatsoever. Um, the other thing we're gonna do in this video that's sort of different is use this parse files, uh, which I mentioned while we were doing the text template, but we didn't really use it for, uh, we use it for one file, but um, here we're gonna use it for more than one file. And it just basically tells you how the templates are gonna be named. Remember, I told you when you parse a template, you can associate a name with it. So of course, when you parse multiple files, how are you gonna identify which template was in which file? Well, the name of the file essentially. And so we're gonna see that. So let's go back to our code. And what we're gonna do is use template that must compile, pass it the template that parse files, and we're gonna parse these two files. What are our template names? Well, it's gonna be the name of the file that was parsed. But remember, it removes it just uses the base name. So basically, if you have templates that are in different directories, for example, it's gonna drop the whole directory and path and just simply use the name of the file. So if we introduce a for loop um, for our, to get all the templates that we, are, we have loaded and run it, we'll see it how it not only lists the templates and their name, but also we, our, temp, our file showed up twice because we were still using the um, IO that whatever, um, right string. But now we can go back and use this method of just using the templates that we parse and put this now in our pages that go file, export it as a variable, well, we don't really need to export it. So because it's same package main, so we don't have to make it a uppercase to export it. But anyway, now we have a slice of strings that represent our file name. And then if we know from variadic functions that we can take a slice and expand it with the expand operator, and now we're gonna be able to rebuild our program and use those templates. And let's, let's test it, and as you can see, the result is exactly the same. Now let's go ahead and modify our home.html template file. And because we wanna make a dynamic um, template anyway, so generate dy dynamic code, so by saying that oh, we're gonna be passing a page or a data structure that has this element favorite items, and then we're just going to, as we walk that, just expand it or evaluate it, then it just makes sense that it should be a simple string instead of some nested structure. We don't need that complexity. And so now we can go back now and pass this to our own templates, rerun it, and voila, we get exactly what we expect. Hopefully, you're pretty excited how these things just sort of come together as one new idea added onto a previous idea and it just like it just grows your knowledge, right? And so now we can see how our web application is just serving up pages dynamically. You can imagine 
that every time this page is refreshed, if we went to a database or something and, we're, and we were reading um, the favorite things from a database, we could be showing it you know, different things without having to rebuild our application. Okay, building on that same team. All right, so as usual, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. This time I live coded the entire thing. Um, I didn't cut out anything really. So if you just slow it down um, in YouTube, you can say run it at half the speed or whatever. Um, you can be able to see me type everything. And if you want to also type instead of looking at the code online, definitely just pause, type it up, pause, type it up. Um, again, remember the code is online. I already pushed it. Just click on the link there in the description to the code go browse it online. Please hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you already subscribed and you like what you're saying, please definitely um, give me feedback. Definitely spread the word to others. I want to make this better and better. I'm totally working on that course that I tell you guys about. I've been mentioning, hopefully in the next couple of videos or weeks, I might be able to show you a little bit, um, a promo of that. Have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye.